So, you thought trap tricks were cute. You went out and got the structure deck, you brought it to a tournament, and then you realize you don't actually know what you're doing. How do we run this deck? How do we play trap tricks? What are the combos? What do you do? Look no further. In today's video, I'm going to explain to you how to play Beware of the Trap Tricks. In this video, I'm going to cover all of the key cards of the deck, what they do, how you use them, and the overall strategy. And at the end of the video, you're going to walk away knowing exactly how to run this deck, how to play Trap Tricks, and how to beat all your friends. So, the main goal of the Trap Tricks deck is to put Trap Tricks Sarah on the field. Trap Tricks Sarah will help you to accumulate resources, and then you want to lure your opponent into committing to their resources and punishing them for wandering on the field using your Trap Hole Trap Cards. With Sarah's effect, you'll be able to easily get out more of your Trap Tricks monsters, as well as a whole bunch of your Trap Hole cards to stop your opponent, control the field, and then finish them off with the resources that Sarah has gathered. Remember, this deck is a control deck, so resource management will be key. If you want to manage your resources, the best way to learn this deck is to learn about all the other decks that you're going to be playing against. So the best bet for you is to study the meta, study what decks your opponent is likely to use, um, what decks people at your, you know, at your locals are using. Work out those decks and work out when exactly you want to trigger your trap hole cards in order to best disrupt your opponent's plays. The main cards in this deck will be your Gravedigger's Trap Hole and your Floodgate Trap Hole. These two Trap Hole cards are the best for disrupting your opponent's plays, for disrupting their first moves, um, for disrupting their disruptions in the case of this, and just for stopping their effects and stopping what they're doing. Um, these cards are going to be the best to stop most, most of your opponent's decks. So focus on getting those ones out along with your Trap Trick Sarah and your Trap Trick Flasia, and you'll basically be able to easily control the opponent's field, control what they're doing, and go in for the kill at the end. Okay, next let's talk about the Trap Tricks monsters themselves. First of all, the main deck Trap Tricks monsters are all unaffected by whole traps. This makes the mirror match one of the most dreadful mirror matches in Yu-Gi-Oh! because the strategy just is very, very difficult to uh, play around. Most of your monsters will have an effect on normal summon and effect on their special summon. So first of all, let's look at Trap Tricks Mermaleo and Trap Tricks Mantis. These two are your main starters in the deck, they're the bread and butter of the deck. You want as many of these as possible if you're running multiple copies of the deck. You definitely want to see either of these monsters in your hand. Trap Tricks Mantis is your main monster searcher and Trap Tricks Mermaleo searches any of your hole traps. Trap Tricks Mantis can also return to your hand any of your set spell and traps and put them back on the field. This effect is great to avoid targeting removal, such as like Cosmic Cyclone or Twin Twisters, and you may also return to the hand traps set by Trap Tricks Dianea to keep them on the field or to trigger Trap Tricks Sarah's effect easily. Trap Tricks Mantis also works wonders with Lord of the Heavenly Prison if you have a copy of it, but the structure deck doesn't come with one, so we won't be covering over that today. Uh, we'll look into that in a future video if you're interested. Now, Trap Tricks Mermaleo, when she's normal summoned, she adds a whole normal trap to your hand, so this is going to be your main starter card, but also when she's special summoned, she'll destroy one of your opponent's spell or trap cards. Now, this effect is a mandatory effect, which means that it'll activate regardless of whether or not your opponent has a target. If they have spell traps on the field or not, it doesn't matter. Mermaleo's effect will still activate, which means that Trap Trick Sarah's effect will trigger um, if you summon her on the first turn. Next up, Trap Tricks Dianea. Trap Tricks Dianea will be bring back a Trap Tricks monster from the graveyard on normal summon, which is a great follow up for your second turn, allowing you to summon a rank 4 Xyz monster or a Ling monster, depending on what you need. Trap Tricks Dianea's special summon effect it sets a whole trap from your graveyard. This is part of the main combo for the deck, so you definitely want to run Dianea. Um, now, this card set by Dianea's effect will be banished during the end phase of your next turn. Um, however, you can you can always use it by that point, depending on what trap you set. It'll probably go off anyway, and if it doesn't, then you can return it to your hand with the effect of Trap Trix Mantis, as we discussed earlier. Keep in mind that Dianea's special summon effect is a win effect, so it can miss the timing. So if special summoned by an effect, this effect needs to be the last event that happens in the chain, which means it needs to go off first. Um, if you chain something to a card and then special summon Dianea, her special summon effect will not go off, so just keep that in mind and watch out for that. Next, let's talk about Trap Tricks Vesiculo. 
Vesiculo is a great extender, that's her whole point in the deck, um, which is always nice to have for an archetype that relies a lot on its normal summon. However, you will have to send a set trap card you control in order to special summon her. However, you will have to send a set trap card you control in order to special summon her. Her effect to special summon herself will trigger the effect of Trap Trick Sarah as well, which is fantastic. And if you have the chance to activate her graveyard effect, then it is a decent recovery tool that can come in handy. Just remember you can only activate one of the two effects each turn. Um, Vesiculo needs to be able to send a trap to the graveyard in order to special summon herself. This means that you can't use her effect if Dimension Shifter was activated, nor can you use a trap that was set by the effect of Trap Trick Skin Lacia, um, because her effect will cause that card to be banished instead of go to the graveyard, which we'll talk about a bit later. Trap Tricks Attracts. Atrax usually isn't played because she's not the best of the Trapdrix cards, she doesn't have a normal and special summon effect like the other ones, but she can be an interesting tech card for specific metas. Atrax makes your normal traps unable to be negated by card effects, however your opponent can still chain effects to your traps, but they just can't negate them. She also allows you to use whole normal traps from your hand, but that really comes into play as you'll easily be able to get all of your whole traps on the field, and then of course you have Trap Tricks Reflasia who can activate their effects from the deck, so that means that Atrax isn't really the best card, but it can be great depending on what you're going up against, whether you need to stop um, negation, whether you need to activate traps from the hand depending on what sort of cards your opponent has. Atrax can be a very useful card to have, but in most cases is not one of the ones that you want to open up with. However, one other thing to note is that she is the strongest of the main deck traps with 1800 attack points, making her a reasonably useful beat stick in certain situations. Trap Tricks Nepenthes, another Trap Tricks that does not usually see much play, but can be interesting to play at M1 copy. Just like Atrax, she doesn't have an effect on summon, which makes her one of the weaker Trap Tricks monsters, um, but she can special summon Trap Tricks from the deck or add to your hand a Trap Tricks monster after using a whole trap, making her quite similar to Trap Trick Sarah, and she would have been used a lot more before Sarah was released, but now that we have Sarah, Nepenthes isn't seen as often. Um, however, running one of them can be quite interesting and will allow you to set up your board a lot more for your turn two. Now, unfortunately, a Trap Trick's Genlacia is not played at all. She's not really a great card. Um, she can be useful in very niche situations, but overall, Genlacia isn't a great card. She doesn't have an effect on summon and requires you to have a whole trap in the graveyard and to tribute her in order to use her effect in the first place. You can only use her effect during your second turn most of the time, which is already an issue for a deck that really wants to go first in order to control the field, and she does not offer a good follow-up play unlike um, Trap Tricks Dianea, and the traps that you set are banished when they leave the field, meaning that you can't reuse them later with Dianea's effect or with Glenlacia's own effect. <coughs> you can, however, reset your whole traps that are on the field with um, Kularia's effect, and they'll no longer be banished by Glenlacia's effect when they leave the field after you set them back by a Kularia's effect. However, just overall, Glenlacia is a little bit too slow and um, just isn't great, doesn't have a lot of follow-up, doesn't have very high attack, and just overall doesn't help out the deck very much. Now let's talk about the two new cards that came with the structure deck, Trap Tricks Prudica and Trap Tricks Arachnocamper. First of all, Trap Tricks Arachnocamper. Arachnocamper prevents set cards in your spell and trap card zone from being destroyed once per turn, which is a great effect in certain metas um, against certain decks. Again, like I said earlier, you really want to know what your opponents are playing. That will be the best bet in learning to play Trap Tricks. Um, but overall, Arachnocamper isn't the most fantastic card. She has a quick effect that if you control a Trap Tricks monster, you can special summon her from the hand, but you can't special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn, but that's okay, except for insect or plant monsters, that is. Um, so you, that's fine with the structure deck, as all of our extra deck monsters are insect or plants, but if you add extra cards, just keep that in mind. Arachnocamper is fantastic in that she can easily be special summoned from your hand, allowing you to go into a rank 4 or a link 2, um, just getting an extra resources on the field to finish off your opponent, especially on the second turn, and of course against certain decks she does prevent um, your set cards from being destroyed, which is great. 
Next up, Trap Tricks Pudica, another starter card. Pudica is a fantastic addition to the Trap Tricks deck. She is a very powerful card that you definitely want to run three of, in my opinion, if you have three copies of the Structure deck. Pudica's effect, when she is summoned, um, you can add to your hand Trap Trick Garden, that's the new field spell, which we'll talk about later, which then allows you to extend your plays and very easily get out your Sarah, get off Sarah's effect, and of course go into more rank 4s and link 2 monsters. Pudica's effect um, is a great starter and a great extender. Pudica's effect makes her a great starter and a great extender, and also if she's special summoned, you can target a special summon monster your opponent controls and banish it, making Pudica a very fine choice to summon off of Sarah's effect, especially during your opponent's turn. It basically makes Pudica another trap hole, basically like, like a bottomless, only slightly worse. Um, Pudica's effect is very powerful to get off on your opponent's turn to disrupt their plays, and of course on your turn to set up a bit of an OTK. Now let's look into the extra deck trap tricks monsters. All extra deck trap tricks monsters are unaffected by trap effects. All the XCs monsters will get this effect if they have materials attached to them, and all the link monsters will get this effect if they were link summoned. However, summoning under the effect of skill drain will negate their effect, so just watch out for that. But if they are summoned before skill drain is activated, they will be unaffected by it. First off, let's talk about Trap Trick Sarah. Trap Trick Sarah is the heart of the deck and can be special summoned using any Trap Tricks monster. So Sarah's first effect to, is to special summon any Trap Tricks monster that is not currently on board from the deck when any normal trap is activated. This makes Sarah a very powerful opener and is the main card that you're going to want to go into all of the time. Sarah. Sarah's second effect allows you to set any whole traps from the deck when another Trap Tricks monster's effect is activated. Keep in mind that her first effect can be triggered from an opponent's normal trap, and you will be able to use her second effect um, even if the effect of your other Trap Tricks monster was negated, which is great. The usual first term combo would be to normal summon any Trap Tricks and then special summon Trap Tricks Sarah, afterwards activate um, Phantom Knights of Shade Brigadine or the new Trap Tricks Holuetta, to trigger Trap Trick Sarah's first effect and then either go into um, Miramello since her effect is mandatory or Mantis who, to use her effect to return a trap to your hand or you could also go into Dianea to set a trap from your graveyard. Sarah is the main combo piece of the deck and is very handy that she is only a Link 1 monster so you only need one monster to summon her and then she just helps you really just accumulate a heap of resources very easily getting out your Aflasia who is the other main extra deck monster of the deck and just setting up your back row with ton of traps in order to stop your opponent. The next Link monster of the Trap Tricks deck is Trap Tricks Cularia. She is another new addition to the deck, a very strong card, but she is a Link 2 monster, um, so you won't be using her as much as your Trap Tricks Sarah. With her effect during the end phase, you can bring back any Trap Tricks monster from the graveyard, which is mainly used to uh, recycle your Mermelio to basically let off an MST and destroy all of your opponent's uh, set cards. Um, just once per turn during the end phase, and of course she can be used to recycle your whole traps with the effect of Trap Tricks Dianea. Its other effect makes you keep a whole trap on the field instead of sending it to the graveyard after using it. This is a great monster to have once you've searched all of the whole traps in your deck and will definitely help you keep up with the opponent for longer duels, just resetting your traps and of course bringing them back by recycling Dianea. She is an amazing card for very grindy games or matchups where you need specific hole trap available at all times, like uh, Gravedigger's Trap Hole, which will paralyze specific decks such as Eldritch. Also, if you use Cularia's effect to set a hole trap that was brought back by the effect of Dianea, the trap will stay on the field and will not get banished when it leaves. Same applies to traps set by the effect of Queen Lacia. This makes Cularia a very useful card um, that can just really extend your plays and cripple your opponent's plays by just resetting your traps and keeping it live on the field, um, keeping it keeping it going off and just recycling cards from your graveyard as well. Finally, another new addition to the Trap Tricks deck, let's talk about Trap Tricks Adipus. Trap Tricks Adipus is definitely a fantastic card and is exactly what the Trap Tricks deck has been missing. With Adipus's effect, while you have a normal trap in the graveyard, all of your Trap Tricks monsters will gain a thousand attack. This means that Adipus is a great card to have on the field for turn 2, and just to set up an OTK with this card is very easy, giving all of your Trap Tricks monsters, which by the time you get this card out will usually have a, four, a field full of them, 
meaning you have an extra 5,000 to 6,000 attack points on board. Her other effect is also fantastic for setting up the OTK. With her second effect, you can target face-up cards your opponent controls up to the number of insect and plant monsters you control, that being all of your Tractrix monsters, and then negate those negate those cards effects, the cards that you targeted, negate their effects, and then you can also um, apply this effect to banish a normal trap from your graveyard and if you do destroy one of the targeted face-up cards. This again is very useful for setting up your OTK and just finishing off the opponent with Adipus and then with the extra 1000 attack on board from all of your Trap Tricks monsters. This solves the one of the biggest issues with the Trap Tricks deck which is the end game. Normally your Trap Tricks deck is going to want to hold out for longer games and just cripple your opponent, control the field until you can get enough damage to finish it off, but with Adipus it is very easy to get enough damage on the field in your second turn, so all you have to do is go first, control the field for a turn, and then bust out your Adipus to get the extra 1000 attack on all of your Trap Tricks monsters. This is also very useful because Trap Tricks monsters are generally not very strong, um, especially the most powerful ones, you know, like Sarah only has 800 attack, Yudika has 900, all of your best trap tricks generally have low attack, um, so Adipus is a fantastic addition to the deck in any case just to boost that attack and help you stay on the field for longer. Next for the extra deck monsters, we have three XCs monsters. First of all, let's talk about Trap Tricks Rafflesia. Rafflesia is the main rank for XCs of the deck. You can play, um, if you have multiple copies, you can play either one or two. Rafflesia is a great card and you'll basically always be putting her on the field. With Rafflesia's effect, you can detach one to apply the effect of any hole trap from your deck by sending it to the graveyard. Gravedigger's Trap Hole and Floodgate Trap Hole are going to be your main targets for this effect, um, but it does depend on what your opponent is using. If you choose to summon her after summoning Trap Trick Sarah and using one of your extenders, you you will also be able to block a Nibiru with her effect. If you choose Summoner after summoning Trap Trick Sarah and using one of your extenders, then this will be your fifth summon, but you can use her effect to send Floodgate Trap Hole, sorry, to send Gravedigger's Trap Hole to the graveyard to negate the effect of Nibiru if your opponent activates it, allowing you to keep this on the field. Keep in mind that this effect is still a monster effect, even though it copies the effect of a trap, so any cards that negate traps, for example, um, like Royal Decree or Jinzo or something, will not stop Reflash's effect. Her other effect protects other trap tricks on the field from um, destruction by battle or effect, and from being targeted by opponent's card effects. This makes protecting Trap Trick Sarah a lot easier. Like I said before, Trap Trick Sarah has very low attack and of course can't be switched to defense mode. Um, <clears throat> And it also allows the effect of card like uh, Torrential Tribute or Needle Sealing. Reflasia will protect your other Trap Tricks monsters from those effects, um, keeping them on the field if you have those cards and add them to the deck. Next up, Trap Tricks Alomeris, my one of my personal favorites in the Trap Tricks deck, just for her design. Another rank 4 Xyz of the deck. Alomaris is a decent card with the effect to special summon a Trap Tricks from the graveyard, which is always nice, and it can be one of the materials um, you detach as long as there is already a Trap Tricks in your graveyard. Her second effect is one that is really used. Um, it will just summon your opponent's monsters to your side of the field if they are um, destroyed due to your card effects. This effect can come up, but it is not always the most useful as you need to have her on the field when you trigger your hold traps. Um, and she's more useful for your second turn, just busting out extra materials, extra cards to use for the uh, finishing. Um, but Alomaris is still a fairly decent card and one that you can get out from time to time. Finally for the extra deck we have Trap Tricks Pinguicula. I said it once for a change, thank goodness for that. <laughs> Pinguicula's effect is not the most useful. This card isn't a great addition to the Trap Tricks deck but it is still useful to at least have one of her. Uh, with her effect, you can detach a material to add a Trap Tricks monster from your deck to your hand. This is of course very useful for uh, continuing your plays, getting out more monsters for the end game, um, and just, you know, getting out your starters as well if you need them later in the game, but of course she is a rank 4 Xyz, meaning that she's not really a starter, so <laughs> you can only really get her out if you already have your starters, and then there's just better options like with Sarah or with Reflasia. Her second effect is that if a monster owned by your opponent is sent to the graveyard or banished by a card effect, then you can attach one of those monsters to this card as material. So basically, if you spring one of your trap holes on your opponent, then they get added to Pinguicula as material, uh, which keeps them out of the graveyard, meaning they can't be used, and also just 
allows Pinguicula to use her effect more often. Pinguicula is a great card for getting more resources, um, but she's just not as good as Sarah and not as good as your other starters, and of course she can't be used as a starter herself, being an Xyz monster. However, she is the most powerful of the Trap Tricks monsters in terms of attack alone, meaning she can be great to get out as a powerful monster if you need to get over something by battle. Alright, back to the main deck, let's look at our two new spell cards. Normally a Trap Tricks deck won't run a lot of spell cards, however with these two new cards, you can, and you definitely want to. First of all, let's talk about Trap Tantalizing Turn. With Trap Tantalizing Turn, you can discard a level 4 insect or plant monster or a normal trap in order to draw two cards. This makes Trap Tantalizing Turn uh, basically a net zero card. It is a good card to have, but overall is not fantastic. The main reason for that is because your Trap Tricks monsters um, are just really great at searching out cards, searching out both Trap Tricks monsters and your whole normal traps, meaning that Trap Tantalizing Tune isn't really necessary except on the first turn when you need to get your starter to the hand, but of course we have like six, six to nine starters in this deck, so Trap Tantalizing Tune isn't the best, um, and you'll basically almost always have a starter in your hand, however it's not a bad idea to run one of them one or two of these cards just to help you accumulate more resources, get more holes in your hand um, to set on the field. Next up, Trap Trip Garden. This is the new field spell and this card is fantastic. This is the main extender of the deck. I would definitely recommend running multiple copies of this if you can. And of course you can search her out with the effect of, um, with the effect of Pudica. Trap Trip Garden is a great card that is, again, something that Trap Tricks sort of really needed um, in today's game. Trap Trip Garden's effect will allow you to have an extra normal summon of a Trap Tricks monster, which is great for playing past any disruptions such as Ash Blossom or just any set cards that your opponent has to disrupt your first play to um, stop your opener from happening. Trap Trick Garden will allow you to play a second opener and get that uh, normal summon effect which is the main effect of your Trap Tricks monsters that lets you search your cards from your deck. Its second effect is the first time each insect or plant monster you control will be destroyed by battle. Each turn it is not destroyed. This is fantastic for helping your Trap Tricks monsters stay on the field, which is another problem that the Trap Tricks have. Um, of course we do have Reflasia to, which is the main card that will um, keep this from happening. But Trap Trick Garden is just an extra card to really help you keep your monsters on the field, and of course will affect Reflasia as well. Finally, its last effect is that you can banish a monster you control to special summon a Trap Tricks monster from your hand or graveyard. This effect is not going to be used very often, as you'll mainly be searching Trap Tricks monsters from the deck, however it can be great in certain situations where you really need to get rid of an opponent's spell or trap, or you really need a card from your graveyard, you can bring back Myrmaleo, or of course, you can bring back Myrmaleo, you can bring back Fudika to get rid of one of your opponent's monsters, or of course you can bring back Dianea to resurrect one of your trap cards. So this effect isn't a terrible effect at all and can definitely help you extend your plays and set up your finishing board, set up the OTK, get rid of your opponent's cards, but all in all, probably won't use it as much except in certain situations. But the main effect, the first effect to get an extra normal summon is fantastic and will definitely help you extend your plays. That's all for the spells of the deck, now let's look into the traps. The main core of the deck is of course bringing out normal traps. And this is, um, and this deck comes with a lot of fantastic traps that you can use. So first up, let's look at the Phantom Knights of Shade Brigandine and Trap Tricks Holy Tea. These cards are absolutely necessary. These cards are fantastic additions to the deck, and I'm about to explain why. So, you want free copies of these cards if possible. Um, you, sorry, you want free copies of at least one of these cards. You want to see it in your opening hand. I would say that Hoyueta is probably the better choice now, um, but in, you know, before the structure deck came out, we didn't have access to Hoyueta, so we just had Phantom Knights of Shade Brigadine. So, <clears throat> These cards can help to trigger both effects of Trap Tricks Sarah on the first turn, which is the main reason why you want them, as of course Trap Tricks work best on the first turn, you know, to control the field, disrupt your opponent's plays on their first turn, however they are have a very difficult time of doing that because Sarah's effect requires you to activate the effect of a normal trap. That is where these two cards come in. These two can both be activated on the turn that they are set. Trap Tricks 
sorry, um, the Phantom Knights of Shade Brigandine can be activated if you have no traps in your graveyard, whereas Hoyueta can be activated the turn it is set by discarding a normal trap from your hand. Both of these cards then get special summoned as a level 4 trap monster, which is great, and they are not treated as trap cards, meaning they're unaffected by cards like, um, Harpy's Feather Duster or something, they won't take them out if they've been summoned by their effect. Um, and of course, these cards also easily allow you to get into a Link 2 or a Rank 4, which you'll use to bring out your Aflacia. You can also, of course, use Trap Tricks Hoyueta to summon Trap Tricks Sarah. Hoyueta, I would say, is the better card for several reasons. For one, it is a Trap Tricks monster, meaning you can use it to summon Trap Tricks Sarah or use it for any other cards that require a Trap Tricks. Um, and also, her effect to activate her requires you to discard a card from your hand, um, discard a normal trap, which can also be great for setting up your graveyard. Having a whole trap in your graveyard is a good thing with this deck, and of course allows you to activate Diane's effect, which will then trigger Sarah's effect, meaning that basically the card that you discard wasn't even discarded, it just comes back to the field, you get off Sarah's effect, you get off Diane's effect, it's all around just fantastic. Her other effect is that you can banish this card from the graveyard to target a Trap Tricks monster in your graveyard and special summon it. Again, this is a fantastic effect, basically like a Monster Reborn for Trap Tricks, which is a lot better than the Phantom Knights of Shade Brigandine, which doesn't really do much other than activating on the first turn. The main reason you want to have these cards is to activate them on the first turn to get off Sarah's effect, to set up your field, get another Trap Tricks monster out, um, and it's just all around fantastic. The other reason that Hoyueta is a little bit better is that she has a very high defense points, whereas Shade Brigandine doesn't really have any attack or defense at all. Now, let's look into our hole traps. The hole traps is the other half of the Trap Tricks deck. They can be easily set by Trap Tricks Sarah from the deck, or searched by the effect of Trap Tricks Mermaleo, or they can be used from the deck by the effect of Trap Tricks Reflasia. You should always be playing at least 3 to 4 of them, and you may go up to 6 or 7 hole traps depending on your playstyle, especially if you're running a pure Trap Tricks deck. Um, since the hole traps are searchable and can be recycled, you should only really play one copy of each hole trap, however the structure deck does come with two copies of Bottomless and Trap Tricks Trap Hole Nightmare, which is never a bad thing, and of course you may want to run multiple copies of Floodgate and Grave Diggers. Floodgate Trap Hole Floodgate Trap Hole will flip a monster face down permanently, unless of course you attack into it, or it is flipped face face up by a card effect. Since the monster is face down, it can't be used as material for a Link Summon, a Synchro Summon, or an Xyz monster, which just stops your opponent's plays almost completely, um, giving them a dead card on the field that they can't use. This is especially good when facing a Pendulum deck, as you can flip face down every monster that they Pendulum Summon, giving them a full board of useless cards and just just basically Ojamas their board, right? Gives them a full board of cards that they really just can't use. This effect can also prevent ignition effects, like the effects of uh, Ad Emancipator monsters, from having the chance to activate just by flipping them face down. So any monster with an ignition effect, that being an effect that doesn't activate as soon as it's summoned, will be stopped from activating by the effect of Floodgate Trap Hole, which is fantastic. However, you can still use a face down monster for a fusion summon, so if this won't stop, um, decks that use a lot of fusion summoning, like your uh, branded decks, um, <clears throat> but it is still recommended to play at least one or two copies of this card if you can. Keep in mind, however, that Link monsters cannot be flipped face down as they can't be put into defense position, so Floodgate Trap Hole will not stop your opponent's Link monsters, but it is just great for stopping your opponent's starter monsters, preventing those ignition effects from going off, and just giving them a field full of monsters that they really can't use. Next up, let's talk about the other main trap hole card, Grave Digger's Trap Hole. You want to run multiple copies of this card if you can. <clears throat> this card negates the effect of every hand trap in the game. It is basically the best hole trap in the deck. Um, it can also be used to negate banished monster effects, like the effect of the Thunder Dragon, for example, and can stop both effects of Eldritch the Golden Lord, as well as any effect that just activates in the graveyard. One of the common mistakes with this card is thinking it can negate anything in the hand or graveyard, like uh, Invocation, but it only prevents monster effects, so just keep that in mind, this only works against monsters. This card cannot be activated in the damage step, so it won't negate the effect of um, Sky Striker Ace Ray if you destroy a Sky Striker monster by battle, 
Um, and finally, this card burns the opponent for 2,000 points of damage, turning it into a bit of a win condition, and is kind of insane. Of course, the Trap Tricks deck does struggle with the end game, um, at least before Adipus. Adipus really helps with that, but Gravedigger's Trap Hole burn for 2,000 is very, very useful. So if you can, I would highly recommend playing two of these cards. If you get both of if you get both of them off, um, then that's 4,000 points of damage, halving your opponent's life points and making it very, very useful um, for finishing off the opponent. However, this does, of course, depend on the current meta and what you're going up against. Gravedigger's Trap Hole, however, I think will probably be useful for a very long time. Um, at least, you know, you definitely want one of them. It does stop Nibiru with the effect of, of Reflacia, especially, um, which is very useful to have, and just stops any monster graveyard effects, which is great for a lot of decks. A lot of decks, right? It is a very fantastic card to have. Trap Tricks a Trap Hole Nightmare. This is a nice trap to have at one copy. Um, it provides good disruption and a monster negate. Unlike most hole traps which just get rid of the monster, this card will negate monster effects, which is fantastic. Um, it is easy to meet its activation requirements too, so overall it is one of the better trap hole cards. Bottomless Trap Hole. This card is an absolute classic. Bottomless Trap Hole will non-targeting destroy and banish monsters when they are summoned. It is a decently good disruption, however it can only destroy monsters with 1500 attack or higher. This restriction can matter against certain decks that run uh, weaker monsters, which have powerful effects, but you will usually be able to destroy most of your opponent's monsters, at least all of their, their best ones. Banishing the monster you destroyed is also a nice added benefit, which can prevent the opponent from recovering their cards. Um, and overall, it is one of the better hole traps and has been used for many, many years, even before Trap Tricks came out. Next up, this deck comes with Void Trap Hole. This card can only hit a 2000 attack or higher special summoned monsters, which is a pretty big restriction. However, it can deal with specific threats that the other Trap Hole cards just can't deal with. Um, <clears throat> this card can negate the effect and destroy cards like Lubellion, the Searing Dragon, even if the opponent chains blocks the effect. This makes it a very powerful against Branded Despia decks, um, since it deals with anything summoned with the Branded Fusion and Branded in Red. If this card... Um, as long as it isn't used in the middle of a train. So Void Trap Hole is just a great card to have one copy of, um, just for getting rid of the more powerful cards, um, just cards that other trap holes can't get rid of, and of course it negates the effect of the monster that it is affecting, which is always great. Next up we have the OG, the original trap hole. This is not the best card, it is definitely not the best trap hole card, um, but it can be useful in certain situations. I wouldn't normally run this card, but since the structure deck comes with it, let's go over it anyway. When your opponent normal or flip summons a monster with a thousand or more attack, target that monster and destroy that target. This card isn't as great because it does require you to target the monster, it only works on normal and flip summons, it doesn't affect special summons, um, and it only destroys the target, it doesn't banish it, doesn't negate the effect. So the regular trap hole isn't a great card, however since it comes with the structure deck, if you're just running one copy of the deck, um, then of course you will have this card and it will come off sometimes. It can be useful for getting rid of your opponent's starter when they normal summon a card. You can just trap hole it and get rid of it, but it doesn't prevent its effect from activating um, if it has a uh, effect that activates when it's summoned. <coughs> Finally, the last trap hole in the deck is Terrifying Trap Hole Nightmare. This is one of the new cards that comes with the deck. If your opponent has special summoned a monster this turn, you can target one monster your opponent controls with 2000 or more attack, destroy it, and then if you have a whole normal trap in your graveyard, you can banish one monster from your opponent's graveyard. This is basically, it's similar to Bottomless Trap Hole in that it gets rid of powerful monsters, um, and banishes them as well. It of course also allows you to banish any monster from your opponent's graveyard, which can be very useful for getting rid of, um, the card, you know, any card in your opponent's graveyard that isn't the one that you destroyed with this effect. Unfortunately, it is target destruction, which makes it not as good as some other cards, um, but it can be activated at any time as long as your opponent has special summoned a monster this turn. Finally, for the last of the traps that we need to cover, first of all, we have Evenly Matched. Evenly Matched is one of the best going second cards in the game. It banishes face down, meaning your opponent will most likely not be able to interact with the banished cards, and it can be activated from the hand so long as you have um, no cards on your field. 
This of course makes this card great for going second to just clear your opponent's entire board except for one card, banishing them face down. It is very fantastic for control decks and it's exactly what Trap Tricks decks are missing. The Trap Tricks deck isn't so great at going second because of course it relies on trap cards, whole traps especially, so evenly matched really helps to balance out the deck and just make it a lot more competitive. Next up let's talk about Trap Trick. Trap Trick isn't a fantastic card in this deck, um, especially if you're only running one copy of the Trap trick structure deck but it can still definitely get some use it is especially helpful for getting out evenly matched however only if you're running more than one copy of evenly matched um however your whole traps it's not so much useful for the main reason is that we have trap trick sarah to search for cards and of course we have reflasia to activate straight from the deck um so trap trick isn't the best card to have in your structure deck um, the only cards that you really want to search with it will be Artifact Sanctum and Evenly Match, both of which you only have one of if you're just running one copy of the deck. And last but not least, Artifact Sanctum. Artifact Sanctum is a fantastic card if you're running Artifact Trap Tricks, which of course if you're running the Structure Deck then you probably will be. Artifact Sanctum with the Structure Deck will allow you to summon Artifact Mor Moral Tark, whose effect will then... Um, destroy one of your opponent's cards. So this also gives you a 2100 attack point monster which is very helpful for finishing off your opponent on the next on the uh, second turn onwards and is just great for disrupting plays in general. So there you have it that is how to play structure deck beware of the trap tricks. This video of course goes into how to play trap tricks in general it will be very helpful for running three copies of the deck as well however if you want to run three copies of the deck then I highly recommend that you subscribe for the future videos coming out. I will do a video on combining three copies of the structure deck and I'll also do a video on the uh, combos of the deck. Of course the main strategy with this deck is to get out Trap Tricks Sarah and then just accumulate your field with a bunch of Trap Tricks monsters and a bunch of hole traps. Um, so you want to end your first turn with a copy of Sarah on the field and a copy of Reflasia at least. That will be your main opening for this deck and um, what to go into. This deck is a going first deck, it is most useful going first. Um, unless of course you have evenly matched in the hand, in which case going second is okay, but you definitely want to go first to get off those whole effects and just stop your opponent from playing. Keep in mind this is a control deck, so it's all about controlling the field, controlling what your opponent can do. If you like this video and you want to see more Trap Tricks content, then again, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and of course join the Discord server, link at the bottom of the, link at the, bottom of the description. Thank you all so very much for watching, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I will do my best to answer all of your comments. Thank you very much for watching, my name is Ben Sinkara, and until next time, see ya.